What if I told you there was a way that you could pass that certification exam that you are grinding away with right now without some expensive boot camp or prep class? Well, you're in luck because in this video, I am going to teach you my super secret formula that allowed me to pass the six hour CISSP exam in one hour after two weeks of studying and how you can do it too. Are you ready for this? Let's grow. All right, guys, so back in 2014, I was working as the IT security analyst at a small software company in Dallas, Texas. I had expressed interest to my employer that I was wanting to go higher in my career. You know, I'm already doing the security analyst work, working on the PCI DSS compliance assessment, helping us become compliant in our different locations around the US. And it was cool. So what I did, I negotiated a deal. I actually had my sister help me write up this email to send to my leadership telling them about how I was interested in obtaining the CISSP certification and the value that it would be able to bring to the company. So the way I actually positioned this was like the software company that I was working at provided software services for local governments. So like the court systems, the water system people, traffic light cameras, all that good stuff, right? So I told them, hey guys, it would be really good, it would look really good in the eyes of our clients if we had a CISSP on staff. And so I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> so I actually sent this email, but I put some stipulations on this because you're always confident. And if you do what I'm saying in this video, you are going to be confident too. By the way, this is a great time to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. So this was the disclaimer that I put in the video, because at this time, the CISSP exam was about $600 and training classes were two to $3,000, which is nothing for a multi-million dollar company. But I wanted to guarantee that I could actually get this certification. So what I told them was, all I need you guys to do is just pay for the exam voucher. I will handle the training on my own and I guarantee I will pass it. Do y'all know, know the pressure that put on me? It was pressure. It was pressure, but you know, so let me tell you how it went. So they accepted my request and they're like, sure, you know, get them to send us an invoice. So they they paid for the exam voucher, sent it to me, and I went and scheduled my test. I scheduled my test and I had two weeks, two weeks. So at this point, I'm already working as the IT security analyst. My days are a little light because I'm working in GRC. And I went and put in the work and studying, but not how you would think, not how you would think. All right, guys, so here is exactly how I did it. First thing first, before we take any type of certification exam, we got to have some freaking context. We got to have context. What I mean by this is I was working as the IT security analyst and I knew that I wanted to move to more of a managerial security leadership position. So therefore, I chose the CISSP exam because it is a certification about managerial and cyber cybersecurity practices from a leadership perspective, not a technical exam to be doing some type of hacking, coding, or system administration. What I see people go wrong is they choose a certification because they believe it pays well, and that's it. And then they are just stuck out there in the wild. You gotta understand the context because the context is going to shape how you study and respond to the questions. All right, guys, so here's an example of why context is important. So this is actually a practice question from the CISSP exam. And it says, as the information security manager, you receive alerts from the security operations team indicating that a potential attack is being launched against your network from an IP address located outside of the country. What should be your next course of action? And so the answer choice that you have is A, immediately block the IP addresses at the firewall to prevent further potential attacks. B, investigate the alert to confirm whether the attack is legitimate or a false positive. C, notify senior management and wait for further instructions before taking any action. And D, initiate an incident response procedure to analyze the threat and contain the attack. Now, without the right context, you are going to get this wrong. Because I'd imagine if you're watching this right now, you're like, it's A, let's stop the attackers. And the CISSP exam people, the ISC squared are going to go, eh, incorrect. Context, this is about 
an incident response manager, a senior level, a manager, right? As the information security manager, a manager is not going to be taking this action. This is what a manager is going to do. They're going to initiate incident response procedure to analyze the threat and contain the attack because they have to follow the incident response plan. The managers, the leaders establish the process procedures. They follow them, then instruct the tech guys on what to do. And when you have the context of the exam that you're going to be taking, it's so much easier to pass them without test dumps and everything because you have the context. But if you don't have the right context, you are going to miss that question, those type of questions every single time. So we have to know what context this exam is teaching us from so we can study, act, and respond as that person. Let me know if the comments that makes sense. Great. Number two, you have to do active learning, active learning. So regardless or not, whether you decide to buy a book, because generally speaking, all certifications exams come with some type of book of manual that lays out the outline of what's included in the certification, what you should know. So you don't have to go buy a training class. I did not go and purchase a training class to pass the CISSP. I opted for the information that was on the website. Yes, I did also get the CBK book, which is the common body of knowledge. It's a specific thing around the CISSP, but that gave me a guide. And by the way, I did not read that entire book because certification books are like dictionaries. I don't know about you, I can read a dictionary all day and I ain't gonna retain nothing. I'm not gonna retain anything, and neither are you. I'm sorry, you're not. We're not built that way. You need more of a novel, something that tells a story. And that's where you come in, active learning. It blows my mind how many entitled people believe just because I paid 3,000, 5,000, 15,000, 20,000, 30,000 dollars for an educational system that I should pass the exam and I should get a job. And fam, that is so further from the truth. You pay those, those dues, that money for support to fill in the gaps when I'm explaining like this. When I'm talking about active learning, it means something like this. Right now, you are watching this YouTube video, but when this is done and over, what are you gonna do about it? Are you going to go research the context of the certification exam that you're trying to study, what focal point you should have? Are you actually gonna go research what skill sets you actually have to see what IT certification align with that? Are you gonna do that? And if not, then you are not actively learning. Active learning requires me to take action based on what I was told, what I heard, or what I read. And considering I was already working as a security analyst, in a GRC role, which means I did not have the ability to um, configure systems or any of the technical things, I was already functioning in a CISSP capacity. So it was easy for me to implement the things that I saw inside of the book, which made it stick in my mind. And the problem is people get caught up in studying test dumps, trying to remember answers instead of understanding the context and how to respond as the person that they claim to be taking the test. That test is to prove that you have the, understa the understanding to apply what you have learned through your experience to do the job, not that you could remember test dumps. And that will set you up for failure if you immediately try to go into some test stops and just try to remember everything. And chances are you still won't pass by doing that. Especially now they have these adaptive exams out there. I really need to make sure that I am driving home this active learning concept, guys. I want you to think about this. If you were getting ready to take an exam on riding a bike, what would you do? Hopefully that answer is actually go out and ride a bike. It doesn't matter how many YouTube videos you watch online. It doesn't matter how many books you read. Once you are on that bike and you're trying to balance yourself, it's not going to be the same as learning something theoretical. And this is why mentorship and support is so significant because these courses and things that you can buy online, they are very static and they can't cater to every situation that you may come across or come into contact with. But if you have support, mentorship, you can ask for help to fill the gaps. You could get support to have someone give you additional items and things that you can do to help build that experience.
But if we are thinking we, we are just going to consume some video lessons or some audio lessons and think that we're going to get a transformation from it, it's unlikely to happen. So here's the part that you probably came for my test taking strategy. This right here was worth the price of admission. And this has worked for me every single time and I stand 10 toes down on it. So first, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and then answer this question down in the comments real quick. When you are taking an exam, do you read the questions first and then look at the answers? Let me know, let me know down in the comments. I'm looking too, I'm looking. You do that, don't you? You do. Yeah, you do. Let me tell you something. I don't. I don't. The way tests are structured, especially if it's four questions, multiple choice, that gives you a 25% chance of getting that question right. I don't know about you, but I don't like those odds. I don't like those odds. But what I'm going to tell you will only work if you actually know what you are being tested on. So here's what I mean by this. I do not read the questions first. I read the questions last. I read the answers first because out of those four answer choices that I'm looking at, I am going to clearly see at least two that do not belong there at all. I'm like, these two questions have nothing to do with each other because the test takers, sorry, the test creators generally will give you some answers that are close in the ballpark. So maybe you know, they will try to trick you up a little bit, but there are some that are just so starkly different. They make no sense. They always just throw a curveball in there. So if I look at the questions first and I mark out two that make absolutely no sense whatsoever, especially given the context of this exam, then I'm going to go read the question. Once I read the question, that is where all the context comes together. Now I have the scenario of the question and then it makes more sense to me where I can be like, all right, now I really only have two answer choices to peek from versus me actually reading all the questions, then all the answers. You guys, this is how I was able to take a six hour exam in one hour, in one hour, just like that. So if you got some value from this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the like button on this video and make sure you thump that bell to make sure that you get notified whenever I drop new videos each week guaranteed to take your career to six figures and beyond. Well, that's it for this video, guys. See you on the next one. Peace.